Hello everybody, my name is Pants and today we're going to talk about your UI and some helpful add-ons that will allow you to customize it. I'll talk about my UI and why I designed it the way that I did. After that, I'll give you some links to download my UI profiles and show you how to import them. So if you only care about taking my profiles, then feel free to skip ahead to that section. First up, I'm going to talk about my UI and why I have it set it up the way that I do. If you've seen any of my other videos, then you've seen my UI in action. Everything is set up in a very specific way, and I want to make sure I lay that out for you before I talk about why I've set it up the way that I have. So when we talk about UIs, it's important to lay out what activities you do when playing the game. For me, the most important thing is raiding. So I'm going to set up my UI so that during a raid, during a boss fight, I have everything exactly the way I want it. If you're a PVPer, then this may not be the video for you, so I apologize for that. But there are a few different goals I have when creating my UI. And I think most importantly, I want to keep the center clear of only the most important information. During a boss fight, you're primarily going to be focusing on the center. This is because you need to focus on your character, as well as any enemy characters and any mechanics that you need to avoid. So instead of cluttering this area, you only want to show what's most relevant to your responsibilities and to your survival. If you use a weak ore pack for Old War or any raid, you'll see that the add-on developers put the most important information in the center of your screen right around your character. That's because they know you're going to be looking there and you'll see the important warnings to avoid dying. Here, my weak ore is telling me to avoid mechanics with a circle around my character. Let's spread out from the middle and talk about the surrounding area of my UI. I have the outer area organized in a very specific way. Below my character is anything relevant to me and my rotation. So this is going to show my character's health and mana, my target's health, my Shadow Priest UI weak ore that tracks my cooldowns, that tracks my mana, has some dot timers, uh, my cast bar is here, and then way at the bottom are my action bars, which, you know, they're not generally relevant during a fight, but I'll talk about them when I talk about LVI. To the right, I have my DBM timers. The timers that are in the furthest corner are mechanics that are approaching, but not quite happening yet. These might be something that's happening in 30 seconds or a minute, so it's good to be aware of them, but I don't need it flashing in the center of my screen. But then the closer timer is anything that's happening in the next 10 to 15 seconds. This makes it easier for me to see what's coming up really soon so I can properly play around for them in the next few seconds. If I need to move, I can plan for that. If I need to go click something, I can plan for that. All it takes is a quick glance to the right for me to know what's coming up soon. To the left are my custom timers and raid frames. I have a weak ore here that tracks my dots on all targets so I know when they're going to expire and I can reapply them. This is really important for multi-dotting because when you have dots on a lot of targets, you might not be aware of what's falling off soon. A good nameplate add-on takes care of this, but I like having this weak aura on the side just so that I have multiple ways to track my dots because in a chaotic fight, it's really easy to lose track of your nameplates. So this is a little bit overkill, but it's one of my personal preferences and something that I enjoy having. And that's what's important when designing a UI. What's important to you? Also on the left, I have a weak ore that shows the time or how long it's going to be until my target dies. This is important on boss encounters because it allows me to plan out my cooldowns. If I know something is dying soon, I wanna make sure I use my cooldowns before it's too late and I don't get full value out of them. It's also really nice if you're a warlock and you have cooldowns such as your infernal that you wanna time for a minute before the boss dies. This weak ore isn't perfect as, you know, if you're at 40% health on the boss, it's not going to be taking into account the extra damage that's going to happen during the execute phases once, you know, your warlocks, warriors, fire mages all start doing a lot more damage. But it is a good estimate of how long the boss is going to live, and I really like it for that feature. Above my character frame, I have an add-on called Decursive. This allows me to dispel and remove diseases from anybody in the raid with a simple mouse click. It's really useful and if you're a class that can dispel debuffs, I highly recommend getting it. Finally, I have my raid frames and buff trackers to the far left. These are from the add-on Voodoo or Vado. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, so maybe one of you can let me know. Anyway, the buff tracker is really nice because all I have to do is click this button and it'll apply power word fruit, fortitude or divine spirit or shadow protection to anybody who doesn't have it. This is really important for anybody who dies in combat because it means I can just click the button and they'll automatically get the buff. I don't need to go searching through my raid frames to see who does and doesn't have a buff. It just automatically goes to the person that doesn't have it. Obviously for raid wide buffs, you want to use the one that costs a reagent and applies it to the entire raid, but it's just a really simple quality of life feature for when, you know, a single person dies and needs a rebuff. 
Finally, I have my nameplates. I mentioned these before, but they're incredibly important to track dots on multiple targets, to track the health, track their percent health, and just, you know, it even has a cast bar so I can see their cast bar not only on their target frame that's near my player frame, but also at their nameplate. So this is from the add-on plater and it's extremely customizable and has a lot to it. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in detail in the plater section, but it's incredibly valuable to have a really good nameplate add-on for anybody who can cast dots on multiple targets or if you have debuffs that you're trying to track on other targets. So everything is positioned in a way where a simple glance from the center of my screen can get me all the information I wanna know with the most important information being closest to my character model. Next, I'll talk about my favorite add-ons in detail and show you how to import my profiles or customize them yourself. If this video has been helpful, then please consider subscribing as I need to hit a thousand subscribers in order to monetize the channel and I appreciate all the help I can get. The first add-on I wanna talk about is called LUI. This is a handy do-it-all add-on that can replace your entire UI itself. It would take me hours to run through all the customizations that this add-on has to offer, so I'm not going to do that. But if you're interested in learning more, there are plenty of guides online, or you could check out the website at tuckui.com. So assuming you have the add-on installed, let's talk about importing my profile. Here's a fresh brand new level one character with all add-ons disabled. I'm going to enable LVI. And as you can see, there are already massive changes to your UI. Again, I'm not gonna cover everything. I'm just gonna go straight into importing my profile. So if you go to the video description, you can find the Wago link for my LVI profile. Click on that link to go to the Wago website. Click copy import string, and then go back to your game. Open the LVI settings by typing backslash LVI. In the bottom left, find the tab called profiles and click on it. Then in the top right, find import profile. After you click on that, paste the import string from Wago into the black box that appears. Click import now and voila, you have my LVUI profile. Now what exactly does my LVUI profile change? For starters, the main thing is the action bars. Those are all assembled at the bottom of your screen and you can put them in any way you want. This is um, a spacing that I really enjoy. And if you ever look at my screen, you'll see that I have a lot of my buttons scattered about. This is because it's really easy for me to lose icons when they're all grouped together. Even though that would look better, it's more aesthetically pleasing when they're all grouped together. For me, it just makes it harder to find whatever I'm looking for. So specifically, I sometimes click my potions. It's not the best thing to do, and I would recommend you try to keybind every button that you're gonna press, but that's why I have my potions and my dark runes off in their own little area, just because if I'm searching for them and they're clumped together with all the other icons, it's possible that I might misclick or it'll take me a second or two to find them, even though I already know where they are. When you're fighting a boss, you don't wanna to have to think when you're searching for something. You wanna just be able to find it immediately. And this is something that helps me with that. So action bars being placed the way they are just helps me with my mental organization. The next thing is my player nameplate. Um, so you can see this is in like the bottom left corner of my screen. And then when I click on myself, you can see my target and my target of target. So this is entirely controlled by LVI, and it's something that I like. I like the placement, I like the size. I think it just makes it easy to see my character health. And you know, I can look at my target, I can see any debuffs, I can see who my target is targeting. In addition to that, it also controls my chat box and all these bars at the bottom that show like my durability, the time, my FPS, my MS, and how much gold I have, and then the mini map in the top. So this add-on really can do it all. And it's something that if you wanted to dig into it, you could probably use this as your only add-on um, that just controls everything. I don't know that I'd recommend that. I haven't messed around with it enough to know whether that's a suitable replacement for the other add-ons that I've listed. I just know that it can do everything. I'm not sure that it's the best at doing everything though. The next add-on I wanna talk about is called Plater. Similar to LVI, I'll show you how to import the profile and then talk about some of the things that Plater can do. So remember, go to the description of the video, find the Wago link for my Plater profile, and then copy it. Once you get into the game, type backslash Plater to open up the Plater menu. Find the tab that says Profiles in the bottom right of the top section and click on that. Then click on Import Profile on the left and paste the string from my Wago link into the box in the center. After that, click OK, and now you'll have the profile. When you first look at the nameplates, there's a few important customizations that I've made that I want to talk about. So first you'll see the name of your target as well as their level in the top right. 
in the bottom middle, you'll see a number and that'll be how much health the target currently has. So that'll go down as you deal damage to it. In the right corner, you'll see a number. This is the percentage health that the mob has. This is important if you have execute talents as you'll know when you can use your execute abilities. Some of the other things that the nameplates will do is if you get aggro on a target, it'll change color. This is so that you know to stop attacking that one or use fade or use shatter or whatever ability you might have to reduce your aggro. The other important features of Plater is being able to track your debuffs on a target and multiple targets. So if you're somebody who's going to be multi-dotting or if you need to keep debuffs on a second or third target, you'll be able to see them and you can customize which buffs are tracked and which aren't so that you're not tracking every single debuff that's being put on a target, but only the most important ones for you. This can be done by going back into the Plater menu, clicking on buff tracking, and then you can add debuffs to your blacklist or buffs to your blacklist. You can also add debuffs to track and buffs to track. So if there are any specific buffs or debuffs you wanna track or filter out, this is where you would do it. Besides that, there are so many different options. And similar to LVI, I'd recommend checking out a guide because it would take me way too long to run through them all here. I've made fairly minor modifications to my Plater profile, so there's a lot more that can be done. And if you're somebody who really wants to dig into the weeds, I'd highly recommend it as there's a lot of value that you can get out of this add-on. Now for the next add-ons I'm going to mention, I'm not going to run through them in too much detail, but I'll provide links to my profiles or specifically for weak auras, a bunch of different weak auras that I find really helpful. So speaking of weak auras, let's hop into it. What are the most important for me? So number one, and I mentioned this before, is my little Shadow Priest UI that sits above my cast bar. Now, regardless of what class you play, whether it's Priest, Warlock, Warrior, it doesn't really matter. I think having one of these little centralized UIs is really important. You'll be able to track your buffs, your debuffs, your timers, your cooldowns, everything that's important to your character, and you don't need to go looking elsewhere for it. Um, again, tr with trying to keep your eyes near the center of your screen, having one of these near your character model is incredibly helpful. The weak aura that I use is made by Foji, but I'd recommend searching Wago for your class and, you know, specifically filter for Wrath of the Lich King and try to find a weak aura that speaks to you. Another weak aura that I've mentioned before is my dot tracker. Again, this is a little bit redundant since Plater is also tracking my dots, but I do like having a centralized area to look at my dot timers. Now, this weak aura is specifically for Shadow Priests but I have made edits to it to work with Affliction Warlocks and Demonology Warlocks. If you haven't edited weak ores before, then I'd recommend just finding a different dot tracker on Wago, because I'm sure that there's a bunch for whatever dot you're trying to track. That's it for weak ores, as there's just way too many different customizations for me to run through in a single video. But do a search on Wago and see if you can find something for your class that I didn't mention. I'm sure that there's tons of good options out there. The next add-on I want to talk about is Quartz. This is a cast bar add-on and I've used it for years. I've used it in retail before playing classic. And the reason that I like it is for two reasons. One is that it shows ticks for channeled spells. So when you're casting Mind Flay, Mind Seer, Arcane Missiles, Drain Life, Drain Soul, whatever your channeled spell might be, you will see each individual tick. And these are the points in time that that spell deals damage. This is really important because if you're gonna be clipping that spell as in canceling it early, you wanna make sure you do it right after a tick in order to minimize the amount of downtime between spells. The second reason I like Quartz is that it's just really easy to use and customize. Again, I said I've been using this add-on for years and that's just because of its simplicity. It does everything I needed to. It's easy to customize, it's easy to change its size, shape, colors, whatever it might be that you wanna customize about it, you pretty much can. So it's just a really user-friendly add-on and I just, I highly recommend it for that reason alone. The last add-on I'm gonna talk about is Vado. That's what I'm calling it and that's final. So what I really like about this add-on is it's not quite as user-friendly as some of the other add-ons out there, but it's one of those that you can customize to look exactly how you want it to be. And if you're familiar with the add-on click, you can customize what spells your clicks will do on any one you click on within the interface. Now, as somebody who's a DPS and not a healer, I pretty much use this for buffing and resing. It just makes the process a lot simpler. It's just a nice quality of life feature. 
The other thing I really like about this add-on is the buff tracker. Now this is something that I mentioned previously in this video, but it's what allows me to buff any single member in the raid with any of my priest buffs or mage buffs or whatever class you're playing if they don't have it. And it works, it's great on single players who have died in the middle of an encounter. You don't need to figure out who's missing the buff. You don't need to cast your raid wide buff, which is gonna use more of your mana. You click the button and it'll cast that spell on whoever's missing it. And that's it. It's extremely simple to use and a really nice mid encounter. My profile for this is also in the description of the video. So if you want it, check it out. If not, then customize it and play around. It might not be your cup of tea and LVI can do raid frames as well. So it's definitely not necessary and it could just be an extra add on that you don't want to mess with. So it's personal preference whether you want to download it or not, but I do really like this add on. And that's all I have for you in this guide. I'll link some additional weak auras and add-ons in the description of the video below, but I didn't talk about them because they're pretty minor or self-explained. I hope this guide helped you, and if you have any questions about weak auras or add-ons, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll try to help you out the best I can, but I'm not an expert, I'm just somebody who really enjoys playing the game. Anyway, my name's Pantsface, and I'll see you in the next one.